Yeah, why not, right? There we go. All right, okay. We are... Oh, yeah, yeah, we knew that. Well, let's not act like that was a surprise. Oh! Been doing daily yoga. Well, I'm not, I've been trying to do daily yoga. <clears throat> Um, just, you know, just a thing, just get, get a stretch out. I'm an old man. There's nothing wrong with feeling free and uh, trying to loosen up your bones. I think, I honestly think this series might, it's less about Dracula now. And more about uh, self-betterment and just uh, taking care of yourself. Uh, we're on chapter 14. Which is what, four, four, at least 14 weeks of doing this thing. Three and a half months. It is May 19th, 18th right now. Since February, since before all this. And uh, your boy Kyle's been sticking to it. I don't know if you're pulling your weight by sticking to it also. But uh, if you aren't, I don't blame you. Um, I was just informed that the editor's name uh, might be Miguel instead of Michael. And for that, I apologize. Or but because he put it in as Michael before. And maybe he's trying to hide. But this isn't a place to hide who you are, Miguel. <clears throat> Live your live your truth, you know. Live your truth. Um, yeah, no major insight here. It's it's day it's still daylight out. Well we still we're still doing this. That that amazes me. I, I'm more impressed with myself that I continue this rather than anybody's I knew nobody was gonna listen to this, but I'm still here. It's actually gotten me to read uh Good books on my own. I'm reading To Kill a Mockingbird. I never read that before, so I'm doing that one. I got The Road by Cormac McCarthy. <clears throat> That's going to bum me out. Uh, but let's go ahead and read uh, Chapter 14, Dracula. I might just start watching the movie in comment with it. Because, uh, yeah, Chapter 14. When did this? When did we start having this all the way up? That we were, were we always doing this? Get get out of here. Podcast though, podcast though, to listen to like listen to my voice to go to sleep. That'll be nice though. We'll cut this shit out and then just right into me telling you Dracula. That like that'll be a nice. That'll be a hit. God, I hope it's a hit. I don't know what the future holds. We're all in. Uh, it's a tumultuous state for a lot of us. Uh, charity wise, uh, I did a show last week with my buddy Brennan Kelly. He recommended Planned Parenthood. That's a uh, always and forever for PP. Uh, and if you don't think Planned Parenthood needs your support and you're a fan of mine, go fuck yourself. Get lost. I don't need you. Uh, I mean, for the quality of fans, not the quantity of fans. That's, I think, uh, the message here. But Planned Parenthood's a good one. Did a show Best Stelling. She rec recommended the YWCA of Dayton, Ohio, where she's from. That's a good one. The Tip Your White Staff's always great, uh, as I've recommended in previous episodes. And, uh, I mean, at this point, shit's starting to open up, so who knows? Be safe, be kind. <clears throat> Chapter 14, Mina Harker's Journal. Let's see if we get through this. 23rd of September. Jonathan is better after a bad night. I am so glad that he has plenty of work to do. Oh, fucking fuck me, man. Hold on. All right. Okay. All right. Now we're going. Let's double check the camera then if we're being this haphazard. Oh, that shit's been on for five and a half minutes. <sighs> And the chair, like I was threatening the chair thing. Now I think, now I think I got to sync with the ship. Now I got to go full. Full <clears throat> captain going down with the ship. So this chair, me and this chair, weren't it together for the rest of this series. <clears throat> Chapter 14, Mina Harker's Journal. 23rd of September. Jonathan is better after a bad night. I am so glad that he has plenty of work to do, for that keeps his mind off the terrible things. And oh, I am rejoiced that he is not now weighed down by the responsibility of his new position. I knew he would be true to himself, and now how proud I am to see my Jonathan rising to the height of his advancement and keeping pace in all the ways with the duties that come upon him. He'll be away all day till late, for he said he could not lunch at home. My, I haven't eaten anything today, and it's like 6 p.m., and I'm drunk as shit. He will be away all day till late, for he said he could not lunch at home. My household work is done, so I shall take his foreign journal and lock myself up in my room and read it. How is that cool? So you, everybody just reads each other's diaries and journals? What? 24th of September. I hadn't the heart to write last night. That terrible record of Jonathan's upset me so. Yeah, bitch, you read his journal. Poor dear, how he must have suffered, whether it be true or only imagination. 
I wonder if there is any truth in it at all. Oh, yeah, dumb floozy. Did he get his brain fever and then write all those terrible things or had he had some cause for it all? I suppose I shall never know. Oh, <laughs> you're going to know. For I dare not open the subject to him. And yet that man we saw yesterday, he seemed quite certain of him. Poor fellow! I suppose it was the funeral upset him and sent his mind back on some train of thought. He believes it all himself. I remember how on our wedding day, he said, unless some solemn duty come upon me to go back to the bitter hours, asleep or awake, mad or sane. There seems to be through, through it all some thread of continuity. That fearful count was coming to London. If it should be, and he came to London with his teeming millions... There may be solemn duty, and if it come, we must not shrink from it. I shall be prepared. I shall get my typewriter this very hour and begin transcribing. Then we shall be ready for other eyes if required. And if it be wanted, then perhaps I am ready. Poor Jonathan may not be upset, for I can speak for him and never let him be troubled or worried with it at all. If ever Jonathan quite gets over the nervousness, he may want to tell me of it all. And I can ask him questions and find out things and see how many I may, how I may comfort him. <clears throat> Letter from Van Helsing to Mrs. Harker, 24th of September. Confidence. That's in parentheses. Confidence. Why are we reading it? It's in confidence. How'd we get a hold of it? This, uh, this, uh, device is not working well. Bammy Stokes. Abraham Stoke Raytherham. Dear madam, I pray you to pardon my writing. That I am so far, and that I am so far friend as that I sent you sad news of Miss Lu Lucy Westenra's death. By the kindness of Lord Goldelming, I am empowered to read her letters and papers, for I am deeply concerned about certain matters vitally important. In them, I find some letters from you, which show how great friends you were and how you love her. Oh, Madame Meadham, by that love, I implore you, help me. It is for others good that I ask to redress great wrong and to lift much in terrible troubles that may be more great than you can know. May it be that I see you? You can trust me. I'm a friend of Dr. John Seward and of Lord Godalming. That was Arthur of Miss Lucy. I must keep it private for all the present from all. I should come to Exeter to see you at once. If you tell me I am privileged to come and where and when. I implore your pardon, madame. I have read your letters to poor Lucy and know how good you are and how your husband suffer. So I pray you, if it may be, enlighten him not, lest it may harm. Again, your pardon and forgive me, Van Helsing. Telegram, Miss Harker to Van Helsing, 25th September, come today by quarter past 10 train if you can catch it. Can see you any time you call, Wilhelmina Harker. 25th September. I cannot help feeling terribly excited as the time draws near for the visit of Dr. Van Helsing, for somehow I expect that it will throw some light upon Jonathan's sad experience. And as he attended poor dear Lucy in her last illness, he can tell me all about her. That is the reason of his coming. It is concerning Lucy and her sleepwalking, and not about Jonathan. Then I shall never know the real truth now. How silly I am! That awful journal gets hold of my imagination and tinges everything with something of its own color. Of course it is about Lucy. The habit came back to the poor dear, and that awful night on the cliff must have made her ill. I had almost forgotten in my own affairs how ill she was afterwards. She must have told him of her sleepwalking adventure on the cliff, and that I knew all about it. Now he wants me to tell him about it, so that he may understand. I hope I did right not saying anything of it to Miss Westenra. I should never forgive myself in any act of mine were it even negative one brought harm on poor dear Lucy. I hope, too, Dr. Van Helsing will not blame me. I've had so much trouble and anxiety of late that I cannot feel bare more blah, blah, blah. But I present she's crying, she's bitching. She read the journal, she said about it. I shall say nothing of Jonathan's journal unless he asks me. I am so glad I have typewritten out my own journal so that, in case he asks about Lucy, I can hand it to him. It will save much questioning. Later. He has come and gone. Oh, what a strange meeting and how it all makes my head whirl round. I feel like one in a dream. <clears throat> can it all be possible or even part of it? If I had not read Jonathan's journal first, 
I should never have accepted it, even in possibility. Poor, poor dear Jonathan. How he must have suffered. Please, good God, all that may, this may not upset him if, if he's fucking pissed. What a wig and dream, blah, blah, blah. Dr. Van Helsing must be a good man as well as a clever one. If he is Arthur's friend, Dr. Seward's, and if they brought him all the way from Holland to look after Lucy. I feel from having seen him that he is good and kind of noble nature. When he comes tomorrow, I shall ask him about Jonathan. And then, please God, all this sorrow and anxiety may lead to a good end. I used to think I would like to practice interviewing. Jonathan's friend on the Exeter News told him that memory was everything in such work. That you must be able to put down exactly almost every word. Sp fucking what the fuck ever. She welcomes Van, he welcomes Van Helsing. I rose and bowed, and he came towards me, a man of medium weight, strongly built, with shoulders set back over a broad, deep chest and a neck well bailed. He's a guy. The forehead is a broad, fine, almost straight, then sloping back among two bump. Miss Harker, is it not? I bowed assent. That was Miss Mina Murray. Again, I assented. It is Miss... It is Mina Murray that I came to see that was a friend poor... Fuck this fucking chapter. It's her meeting Van Helsing. Van Helsing, who knows they're vampires. Mina, who's some twit, who's friends with everybody, and husband of Jonathan Harker. I've read your letters, Lucy. Forgive me, I began to inquire elsewhere. There's one they ask. Blah, blah, blah. You have a diary. No, doctor, I wrote it down. Mina, blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. This is Van Helsing talking now. I knew long that Mr. Jonathan was a man of much thankfulness, but see his wife have all the good things. And will you not so much honor me as so help me as to read read for me? Alas, I know not the shorthand. Their letters were in shorthand. By this time, my little joke was over, and I was almost ashamed, so I took the typewritten copy from my work basket and handed it to him. Forgive me, I said. I could not help it, but I had been thinking that if it was of dear Lucy that you had wished to ask, that you might not have time to wait, not on my account, but because I know your time must be precious. I've written it out on the typewriter for you. He took it and his eyes glistened. You are so good, he said. And may I read it now? <clears throat> I may want to ask you some things when I have read. By all means, I said, read it over whilst I order lunch, and then you can ask me questions whilst we eat. He bowed, pla, he read. She got lunch. Oh, Madam Mina, he said, how can I say what I owe to you? This paper is as sunshine. It opens the gate to me. I am dazed. I am dazzle. These fucking idiots going back and forth with their... F like, it's like there's not... Like, there's not something big at hand that you guys want to go and just flex on adjectives for paragraphs on end. Like, there's not a goddamn monster on the loose you're both trying to find. It's just... Van Helsing's glad she typed it out. He thought we saw someone, this is her talking, we thought we saw someone who recalled something terrible, something which led to his brain fever. And here the whole thing seemed to overwhelm me in a rush. The pity for Jonathan, the horror which he experienced, the whole fearful mystery of his diary, and the fear that has been brooding over me since all came in a tumult. I suppose I was hysterical, for I threw myself on my knees and held my hands up to him, implored him to take my husband, make my husband well again. My life is a barren and lonely one, and so full of work that I have not had much time for friendships. But since I have been summoned here by my friend John Seward, I have known so many good people and seen such nobility that I feel more than ever, and has grown with my advancing years, the loneliness of my life. Believe me, then I come here full of respect for you. And you have given me hope. Hope not in what I am seeking of, but that there are good women still left. Ah, oh, fucking go eat. Jonathan's sick. She eats. And she's done eating. And he says. And now tell me all about him. When it came to speaking to this greatly learned, great learned man, I began to fear that he would think me a weak fool. He fucking and Jonathan, a madman. And the journal is all so strange. I has She says, don't laugh at me. He says, I won't. Jesus Christ. Jonathan will be here at half past 11, and you must come to lunch with us and see him. You can catch a train leaving from the place. Fuck off, you guys. How uh, is this? Is this why society didn't advance? Is because they wasted. Like, like you look at an email. It's like, hey, here's information. Run with it. If this is how information was transferred in this day and age, 
Of course we never advanced. Formalities and politeness were the, were the cause of just death. So much death. Letter by hand, Van Helsing to Miss Harker. Let's get into this bullshit. Dear Madam Mina, I have read your husband's so wonderful diary. You may sleep without doubt, strange and terrible as it is. It is true, I will pledge my life on it. It may be worse for others. But for him and you, there is no dread. He is a noble fellow. And let me tell you from experience of men that one would do as he did and go down. <sighs> yeah, I read it. It's true. Anyway, letter, Harker, Van, to Van Helsing, September 25th, at 6.30 p.m. Who gives a fuck what time he wrote the letter? My dear Van Helsing, a thousand thanks for your kind letter, which is blah, great. Uh, wire of saying he leaves by the 6.25 tonight from London. He's coming. Jonathan Harker's journal, 26th of September. Remember Jonathan Harker, the whole reason that this story was remotely interesting in the first place? I thought never to write in this diary again, but the time has come. When I got home last night, Mina had supper ready. And when we had supped, well, like that's a verb for eating supper. We supped. What's up? Supps for sup. You guys sup yet? You up for having some food? She told me of Van Helsing's visit, and of her I've been giving him two diaries copied out and how anxious she has been about me. She showed me in the doctor's letter that I all I wrote down was true. It seems to have made a new man of me. I was the doubt as to the reality of the whole thing that knocked me over. I felt impotent and in the dark distrustful, but now that I know I am not afraid, even of the Count, he has succeeded after all then in his design in getting to London. And it was he I saw. He has gotten younger. And how? Van Helsing is the man to unmask him and hunt him out? If he is anything like what Mina says... We sat late and talked it all over. Mina is dressing, and I shall call the hotel in a few minutes and bring him over. He was, I think, surprised to see me. When I came into the room where he was and introduced myself, he took me by the shoulder and turned my face round to the light, he said, after a sharp scrutiny. But Madame Mina told me you were ill and you had had a shock. So funny to hear my wife called Madame Mina by this kindly, strong-faced old man. I smiled and said, I was ill. I have had a shock, but you have cured me already. And how? By your letter to Mina last night. I was in doubt, and then everything took a hue of unreality. And I did not know what to trust, even the evidence of my own senses. Not knowing what to trust, I did not know what to do. And so only to keep working on what I had hitherto been, the groove of my life. And the guy, hey, my man Harker's got a groove of his life. Grooves in the heart, dog. The groove ceased to avail me, and I mistrusted myself. Doctor, you don't know what it is to doubt everything, even yourself. No, you don't. You couldn't with my eyebrow, with eyebrows like yours. He seemed pleased and laughed as he said, So, you're a physiognomist. Physiognomist. I learn more here with each hour. I am with so much pleasure coming to you to breakfast. No, sir, you will pardon praise from an old man. But you are blessed in your wife. I would listen to him go on praising Mina for a day, so I simply nodded and stood silent. She is one of God's women, fashioned by his own hand to show us men and other women that there is heaven where we can enter, and that its light can be here on earth. So true, so sweet, so noble, so little an egoist. And that, let me tell you, is much in this age. So skeptical and selfish. And you, sir, I have read all the letters to poor Miss Lucy. Some of them speak of you. So I know you since some days for the knowing of others. But I have seen your true self since last night. You will give me your hand, will you not? Let us be friends for all our lives. We shook hands. And he was so earnest and so kind that it made me quite choky. Chalky? Oh, C-H-O-K-Y. And now, he said, may I ask you for some help, some more help. I have a great task to do, and at the beginning it is to know. You can help me here. Can you tell me what went before you going to Transylvania? Later on I may ask more help, and of a different kind, but first this will do. Look here, sir, I said. Does what you have to do concern the Count? It does, he said solemnly. But I am here with you, heart and soul. As you go by the 10.30 train, you will not have time to read them, but I shall get the bundle of papers. You can take them with you to read them on the train. After breakfast, I saw him to the station. When we were parting, he said, perhaps you will come to town if I send to you, and take Madame Mina, too. 
We shall both come when you will. I'd got him the morning papers and the London papers of the previous night. And while we were talking at the carriage window, waiting for the train to start, he was turning them over. His eyes suddenly seemed to catch something in one of them. The Westminster Gazette. I knew it by the color. And he grew quite white. He read something intently, groaning to himself. Mein Gott, mein Gott, so soon, so soon. I do not think he remembered me at the moment. Just then the whistle blew and the train moved off. This recalled him to himself, and leaning out the window, he waved his hand, calling out, Love to Madame Mina, and I shall write so soon as ever I can. <clears throat> Harker, get, Harker gets to the point. The rest of these assholes? Jesus. Dr. Seward's diary. This guy's all right, too. Seward gets to it. 26 September. Truly, there's no such thing as finality. Not with this book. Not a week since I said to Finis, and yet here I am, starting fresh again, or rather going on with the same record. Until this afternoon, I had no cause to think of what is done. Renfield had become, to all intents, as sane as he ever was. He was already well ahead with his fly business, and he had just started in the spider line also. So he had not been of any trouble to me. I had a letter from Arthur, written on a Sunday. And from it, I gather that he is bearing up wonderfully well. Quincy Morris is with him. And that is much of a help, for he himself is a bubbling well of good spirits. Quincy wrote me, in a, wrote me a line, too. And from him I hear that Arthur is beginning to recover something of his old buoyancy. So as to them, all my mind is at rest. As for myself, I was settling down to my work within the enthusiasm which I used to have for it, that I might fairly have said that the wound which poor Lucy left on me was becoming cicatrized. It's on a line break, and it's a word I don't know. Everything is, however, now reopened, and that is to be the end God only knows. I have an idea that Van Helsing thinks he knows, too, but he will only let out enough at a time to wet curiosity. He went to Exeter yesterday and stayed there all night. Today he came back and almost bounded into the room at about half past half past five o'clock, and thrust last night's Westminster Gazette into my hand. What do you think of that? He asked as he stood back and folded his arms. I looked over the paper, for I really did not know what he meant, but he took it from me and pointed out a paragraph about children being decoyed away at Hampstead. It did not convey much to me until I reached a passage where it described small punctured wounds on their throats. An idea, an idea struck me. I looked up. Well, he said, it is like poor Lucy's. And what do you make of it? Simply that there is some cause in common. Whatever it was that injured her has injured them. I did not quite understand his answer. That is true indirectly, but not directly. That is hard to understand. <clears throat> How do you mean, Professor? I asked. I was a little inclined to take his seriousness lightly. For after all, four days of rest and freedom from burning... Harrowing anxiety does help restore one's spirits. But when I saw his face, it sobered me. Never, even in the midst of our despair about poor Lucy, had he looked more stern. Tell me, I said, I can hazard no opinion. I do not want, I do not know what to think, and I have no data on which to found a conjecture. Do you mean to tell me, friend John, that you have no suspicion as to what poor Lucy died of? Not after all the gi hints given, not only by events, but by me. <clears throat> of nervous prostration following on a great loss or waste of blood. And how the blood lost or waste, I shook my head. He stepped over and sat down beside me and went on. You are a clever man, friend John. You reason well. Your wit is bold, but you are too prejudiced. You do not let your eyes see nor your ears hear. That and that which is outside your, our daily, your daily life is not of account to you. You not think there are things which you cannot understand and yet which are? That some people see things that others cannot? But there are things old and new which, which must not contemplate by men's eyes because they know or think they know. Some things which other men have, have told them. This fucking guy. Even his name's on Van Helsing. Your name's fucking Helsing. Get over the van. A lot of people have van in their name. You don't need it. Except Van Halen. Ugh, fucking... But we see... Yeah, all right. Mm.
Ah, it is the fault of our science that it wants to explain all. And if not explain, and if it, it explain not, then it says there's nothing to explain. But yet we see around us every day the growth of new beliefs, which think themselves new, which are yet but the old, which pretend to be young. Like the fine ladies at the opera. I suppose now you do not believe in corporeal, corporal transference. No, nor in materialization. No, nor in astral bodies. No, nor in the reading of thought. No, nor in hypnotism. Yes, I said, Charcot has proved that pretty well. He smiled as he went on. Then you are satisfied as to it. Yes, and of course, then you understand how it act and can follow the mind of the great Charcot. Alas, that he is no more. Into the very soul of the patient that he influenced. Fucking yammering. Oh, there's science, but we don't believe it. There are always mysteries in life. Why was it that Methuselah lived 900 years and that old Parr 169, and yet that poor Lucy, with four men's blood in her poor veins, could not live even one day? For if she lived one more day, we could have saved her. Do you know all the mystery of life and death? Do you know the altogether of comparative atom? Fucking blah, blah, blah. Can you tell me why in Pompous, I and elsewhere, there are bats that come at night and open the veins of cattle and horses and suck to dry their veins? And on some islands of the western seas, there are bats which hang on trees all day. And those who have seen described like giant nuts or pods that want to sit. Yeah, whatever. Okay, bats eat people. Yeah. Good God, Professor, I said, starting up. Do you mean to tell me that Lucy was bitten by such a bat? At such a thing here in London in the 19th century, he waved his hand for silence and went on. Can you tell me why the tortoise lives more long than generations of men, why the elephant goes on and on till he hath seen dynasties, and why the parrot never die only of bite of cat or dog or other complaint? Can you tell me why men believe in all ages and places that there is some Few who live on always, if they be permit, and there are men and women who cannot die. We all know, because science has vouched for the fact, that there have been toads shut up in rocks for thousands of years, shut in one so small hole <clears throat> that only hold him since the youth of the world. Can you tell me how the Indian fakir can make himself to die and have been buried? His grave sealed and corn sowed on it, and the corn reaped and be cut and sown and reaped and cut again. Then men come and take the unbroken seal. And then there lie the Indian fakir, not dead, but that rise up and walk amongst them as before. Here I interrupted him. I would too. I was getting bewildered. He was so crowded on my mind, his list of nature's eccentricities and possible possibilities, that my imagination was getting fired. I had a dim idea that he was teaching me some lesson. As long ago, he used to do in his study at, Ap at Amsterdam. But he used then to tell me the thing so that I could have the object of thought in my mind all the time. But now I was without this help. I wanted to follow him, so I said, Professor, let me be your pet student again. Tell me the thesis that I may apply your knowledge as you go on. At present, I'm going in my mind from point to point as a madman. Not And not a sane one follows an idea. I feel like a novice lumbering through a bog in a mist, jumping from one tussock to another in the mere blind effort to move on without knowing where I am going. That is a good image, he said. Well, I shall tell you. My thesis is this. I want you to believe. This is just the fucking X-Files. <clears throat> to believe what? To believe in the things you cannot. Let me illustrate. I heard once of an American who so defined faith that faculty which enables us to believe things which we know to be untrue. <clears throat> yeah, you're a fucking idiot. For one, I follow that man. He meant that we shall have an open mind and not let a little bit of truth check the rush of a big truth. Like a small rock does a railway truck. We get the small truth first. Good, we keep him and we value him. But all the same, we must not let him think himself all the truth in the universe. Right? I mean, like, I, okay. Then you want me to not let some previous conviction injure the receptivity of my mind with regard to some strange matter. Do I read your lesson all right? Ah, you are my favorite pupil still. It is worth to teach you. Now that you are willing to understand, you have taken the first step to understand. You think then that those so small holes in the children's throats were made by the same that made the hole in Miss Lucy's? I suppose so. He stood up and said solemnly.
then you are wrong. Oh, were it, would it were so, but alas, it is worse, far, far worse. In God's name, Professor Van Helsing, what do you mean? I cried. He threw himself with a despairing gesture into a chair and placed his elbows on the table, covering his face with his hands as he spoke. They were made by Miss Lucy. These couple of bitches. I all right. Like all right. Listen, that's a good. That's a good paragraph about truth. <clears throat> about taking a little bit. Don't throw out the little bit just because it led you to wrong thing. But also, <clears throat> I don't know. I watched a documentary about flat earthers the other night. That's here nor there. Anyway, that's fourteen. Boy, fifteen. I. It feels like I've been in the middle of this book for the last... Since I started, I feel like I started in the middle of this book. Anyway, we got 15 coming up. Boy, are, aren't you excited? Let's say, at least it's Dr. Seward's diary, and that guy knows how to write, so it'd be something, something worthwhile. Okay, public domain, Kyle Kinane, you know what it is. I have nothing else to say. God bless you all, uh, whatever deity or faith you want to lean to, or if not, nothing, may nothing be by your side through this journey. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>